Hey, good morning. Uh, excuse the swollen face there a little bit. Uh, healing though, but it's only like this what, third day, so it's gonna get worse before it gets better. <laughs> eh, eh, that's kind of funny because that's what's gonna happen here. <laughs> it's gonna get worse before it gets better, but we have nothing to worry about if you're born again spiritually and in Christ. You have nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. We've been set free. All right, so today I'm going to go over Revelations chapter 8, verse 8. And you know, <laughs> like I said, uh, I've been praying and praying and praying. I want to know the truth, the whole truth. I want to know exactly what happened. We know Jesus Christ is the truth, right? He is God's word incarnate, like John says. You know, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh, right? This is Jesus Christ. Okay, so we know it's all about him, and Revelations is about the revealing of Christ. And like I said, as I'm going through it, it shows, especially this particular chapter, which I was just drawn to for a reason, you know, and going over it. it I want to know what transpired. Who are we? What's our purpose? Why are we here? What is this world? Really, what is the truth of this world? You know, what's going on? What happened in heaven? Because I, I can see see what's happening here and correlate it with biblical uh, events and prophecies and everything and what's going on. But but I wanted to know everything, the truth. And to know the truth is to know Jesus Christ, right? And uh, Revelation's about the revealing, revealing of Jesus Christ. So uh, what I'm seeing here is what actually transpired in heaven. And like John was taken up, right, out of time. So he saw all the way from the garden all the way to the return of Christ and this is what he's talking about now when I'm done going over this I'm gonna I'm gonna read the whole there's only 13 verses in this chapter I'm gonna read them all top to bottom all the way through I'll go through them and refine them so it's a little easier to understand but uh yeah, I started doing it yesterday I kind of went down the down to eight and I went into nine a little bit verse nine and I'm looking at this and wow the way they flow together it gives you it tells you what transpired in heaven, which is uh, <laughs> which is exactly what I've been praying about. For, I, I just wanted to understand. You know, I wanted to know the whole truth, what, what took place. And, and it's the revealing of Jesus Christ from the very beginning to his return. And uh, it's amazing how God does this. And I, like I said, uh, the, the spiritual world is played out in the physical world. So I'm not saying something opposite and I'm not trying to go against any uh, preachers or pastors out there you know we're just sitting back and watching it transpire we don't know the future but we kind of do with the Bible I mean we know the end story and the end game and we know signs and the signs of the times like he said uh, you know everybody like say oh nobody knows the day or hour but right under that it says my children are not in the darkness they will know the season and we all know it. We're all saying the thing. Like I said, uh, if you're a born again, spiritual believer, we have become of one mind, the mind of Christ. We've been born again and we are blowing the trumpet of God by declaring his word for the return of the Messiah, you know, trying to wake everybody up. So they're ready to go home. They're prepared to leave this world behind, you know. So anyways, I'm going to read this. Uh, Revelations chapter 8, verse 8, the way it's written in most of your Bibles. I'm using the King James. Um, and then I'm going to take it back every word to the original language and, and read it that way. And you're going to see a difference. Um, but like I said, it's, it's, it, I'm not saying that both aren't true or couldn't be true. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm just reading it. I think what, the, like Jesus said, abide in my word. If you love me, you'll abide in my word. You'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. Okay, now I'm going I'm to read this the way it is in most of your Bibles. Okay, Revelations 8, verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and it... Oh boy, here we go. I keep losing my place. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. That's it. Short, simple. And the second angel sounded, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Okay. So now, 
we're going to go over it by taking everything back to its original language using the Strong's Concordance. If you have a study Bible, look through eSort, download eSort, go on eSort on your computer, download my Bible on your phone, you know, with the Strong's Concordance, you know, Hebrew, Greek, Arabic, uh, definitions, dictionaries, all right? And this is right in the palm of your own hand. You can do this, and I hope you do it. Check, check, double check. You need to see it for yourself. You can't just sit back and listen to people. You need to see this for yourself. You have to have the desire. Do you want to know the truth? Or are you just content in listening to other people? You know what I mean? You, it, there's a big difference, like I said the other day, between uh, hearing something and, and having something described to you and then actually doing it. Okay, there's a difference, and it's it's a big difference in experience and everything else. So, okay, here we go. Revelations 8, verse 8. And the second one who is sent to move as the mind of one, who a great number to bear away, that means to like remove or strengthen, you know, to bear away, to remove or, or strengthen, uh, what has been raised to appropriate what is committed to him, to kindle, which means to arouse and inspire, to cast into salt, to become salt. It can mean cast into or become, to become salt. And now we've heard that. We're the salt of the earth, right? When you're born again spiritually and you're spreading the gospel, you know, planting seeds, you, we're the salt of the earth, right? I mean, that's referenced in other verses, so... Like I said, no witness of two or three, let a thing be established, right? To cast into salt or to become salt, to become kindred, to become family members by the atoning blood of Christ. Uh, that's a big difference between just reading it <laughs> as it's written in your Bible and then taking every word back to the original intent of the writer who is John, who was inspired by the Holy Spirit. I'll read that one more time. And I think this is talking about the second one because we have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Uh, I think this is talking about Christ, the second one in the Trinity, the second person of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the second one who was sent, and I believe he was sent into this world, that's what it's talking about, to move as the mind of one. He was moving with the mind of God, one. Because God is one. He's triune God, but he's one in three persons. Three aspects. Like I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband, right? So anyways, there we go. Uh, and the second one who is sent to move as the mind of one, who a great number to bear away. He's going to catch us up. He's going to take us away and to bear away. He's going to strengthen. It can also mean to strengthen. Uh, what has been raised? Because once, once, once we're born again spiritually, we're, ra we're, we're raised. We're raised up. We will stand up in the midst of men to proclaim the word of God, right? Uh, we will shine as a star, as some of these earlier verses I talked about went over, say, right? This, it all flows together. It's amazing. I, I'm going to read it all together, all 13, once I get through them all, and you'll see how it just flows together. and it makes. It's telling us what transpired in heaven. This is what I've been praying for, big time. <laughs> I wanted to understand the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, uh, to appropriate what has been committed to him. Now he's appropriating what has been committed to him, right? To kindle, to, that means to arouse and inspire, to become salt, to become kindred, a family member. We were adopted by God. We're, we're grafted into the main vine once you're born again spiritually. To become salt, to become kindred by the atoning blood of Christ. So there's that verse. Uh, this is getting deep. <laughs> I've been praying and praying and praying to understand what actually transpired. And we're all God's children. Uh, I think we got, we partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was forbidden by God in heaven. And some of us were thrown down and some of us were set in place, it seems like, because they make a definite distinction. 
for a purpose in place or time, which is here, right? And some of us will be uh, purified by the atoning blood of Christ, meaning he can take us back. We're given back to whom we belong, back to whom we belong, right? So we get to go back home. We're turned properly up, boop, and we get we become the mind as one. Now our eye is single. We, we see through the mind of God because we're born again spiritually. And it's funny. I watch all the YouTube channels out there, and I'll say a verse like this, and then later on in the day, and I'm sure most of them, I only have like 50 subscribers, or whatever, which it's all good, whatever. I'm, I just feel a need that I am supposed to do this in these end days. Uh, I think it's God's calling to his people to take his word to continue to study back to the original language using the strongest concordance in that. Get a much clearer, deeper understanding. You'll be set free. You, you, there's a difference between, like I said, uh, knowing something and actually being involved in it. You need to do this to, for yourself, right? And uh, we get we get turned of single eye. We we're purified and get it, but unfortunately, it, like it said the other day, which really hit me hard when I because I wouldn't get it, and then it's like the Holy Spirit just told me he came upon me and I felt him and he said this word that I mean he was telling me exactly what words right and unfortunately just like the Bible says the majority is going to go down that wide road to destruction but it's giving them what what's due because what they they chose to believe a lie rather than the truth this world is the strong delusion wake up people this world your body it's a trap it's an idol it's a phantom image, vain show, like it says, for image in Genesis 1.26. I believe that's what God allowed Satan and the fallen angels to do. And then Genesis 2, the Lord God breathed his life into his representative figure. And when you take that back, like uh, J.K. says, you know, that's that's Christ, you know. And, eh, it just gets deep, but uh, this is being revealed. So stick with it. I'm going to go through them all. Once I finish them all, I'll keep going all the way down to verse 13, read them all through. And I believe this is the revealing of what transpired in heaven, which reveals Christ and his word and everything. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So God bless you. Love and respect everybody. Uh, have a great, have a great day. Sign up.